each, is that right? Yes. Pool or a spa? A spa, right. Is it a combination of a pool and a spa? Just a spa. Donna's one of the lucky ones. She, you won the spa, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, it was one of those door prizes. Uh, it was like a $20,000 spa or something like that. But what's the important part, Donna? Having somebody professional install it. Folks, I'll uh, get this show on the road. Um, so my name's Chris Samartis. I look after the Master Pool Builders Association Australia. And here we go. We've got a, a legend of the aquatics industry has just turned up, Max. How are you, mate? Good to see you. <laughs> oh, well, we were. Oh, right, OK. There's two of them. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. So look, I'm just going to today talk about the importance of uh, what's involved with these uh, pools and spas. Probably one of the, probably behind the house is probably the second biggest purchase you're going to make for your home. Um, pools and spas can start anywhere from, I suppose, twenty thousand dollars up through to seven or eight hundred thousand dollars, depending on uh, what you really want. But today, um, I'm just going to go through some of the important aspects um, that are really sort of critical in this space. So first of all, I'll tell you guys a little bit about what we do. We've been around for 61 years this year, is that right Heather, 61? Founded in 1961 and uh, we're the peak body for master pool builders, craftsmen, people that are uh, experts in their profession. In fact, uh, a lot of our members are multi-generational. Uh, then I'll take you through a little bit about a water neutral pool program and that's critical these days when it comes to water sustainability and conservation. Uh, builders responsibilities, safety barriers which is a topic of top of mind at the moment, owner builders and what we think about them and of course I'll finish off with just a touching on building surveys. I'm not a building surveyor but it's important to know what that process involves. So, uh, as I mentioned, we've uh, been around for 61 years, Megan, 1961. You weren't born then. Your mother probably wasn't born then. Um, and uh, it was started off uh, in a hotel in St Kilda uh, with some dedicated people. And uh, here we are today and we sort of uh, continue to grow and make sure that we advocate and self-regulate the industry so that you, the consumer, have something uh, you can trust, a product you can trust, but ultimately a craftsman and an absolute professional that'll uh, uh, care for your home and care for your uh, project. Um, <coughs> our mission is to represent those members um, and you know we strive to make sure that that backyard dream of yours is a significant, uh, makes a significant impact to the social well-being of your family. Some of our, you know, our core values, we've got, uh, you know, we demand that our members act with integrity, we insist on quality, leadership, they always try and continuously improve, we've got a lot of training programs, so they can't be a member unless they've actually done our training courses. We want to build community and between all that, pursue the balance between family life, projects, the build environment and the overall well-being of the family. Um, what's, it, well, you know, what's our difference? So uh, we're thinking, so our members are very sort of leaders in this space. Uh, they deal with uh, high standards and they don't lead up on that. That's a really important part between them and others. Um, and at the, end of, at the end of it all, enduring quality is something that they chase and they pursue with passion. Uh, what do we do? So we're an organisation that advocates on behalf of the industry. Um, we also work with a lot of the planning authorities. We work with the Victorian Building Authority, which is the regulator of the industry in the construction sector. And we deal with a, a whole heap of other interstate authorities that regulate. And we've got close relationships with Kids Save Victoria, Life Saving Victoria and Consumer Affairs. Just some stats, which is an interesting stats that people say, how many pools out there? Well, you'd know this, mate. How many pools? 400,000 plus pools out there in Victoria alone. 
uh, which is interesting. So five to 6,000 pools are built every year. And on top of that, we've got spas. So roughly one in 15 Victorian homes has a pool or a spa. And uh, most of that work is performed by our members. So our goal is to ensure that you, the consumer, has a really positive experience when it comes to the project. Uh, where do you begin with all this? Like I've been telling everybody, jump on our website, download the consumer guide, it's for free, and it'll answer all your questions. Uh, a whole heap of questions there to protect you, the consumer. Acquaint yourself with terminology, options, and do as much research as you possibly can. Then pick two or three pool builders, get the quotes, bring them in, let them have a look at your site, your home, and you know what your ideas are, and then they'll go through a whole heap of design aspects to see what's suitable and what's best for you. And then you can worry about choosing, choosing the colour of the tiles or anything else uh, in that space. Why should you use a member? Well, there's lots of reasons for it. Now, a lot of things can go wrong when you're do, doing construction projects. We do the vetting process for you. Not anybody that's a pool builder can be a member of our organisation. Isn't that right? They have to build 10 pools. We then go and get references from people. We gazette their names out in the wider industry to make sure that they haven't gone broke in the past. We make sure that they're licensed, got insurance. Then we interview them, then we put the sticker on their forehead, and then they can go and uh, make sure that they can go and sell you a pool or at least continue the project. So we do a lot of the vetting process for you so that some, that's something that you don't have to worry too much about so that we can build trust between the industry and the consumer so you've got a, a list of professionals and absolute craftsmen in their field. Now I can hardly see that. Uh, you should have made that right a little bit bigger, Heather. But <coughs> what's the process? And I've just got well, I've gone through the process here. Another big component is the ethics. We've got a, a code of ethics that they must abide by. And yes, we do kick people out. If they don't do the right thing, and we do get consumer complaints, we strip them of membership, we delete them from the website, and we make sure that they can't use our contracts. That's what our contracts look like at the, at, on the front page. They've been developed over 40, 50 years. They're very detailed and they're there to protect the consumer. They're an absolute must that whatever you do in this space, they need to use these contracts. Um, if you don't see contracts from our organisation, um, think twice because uh, it's a really key component to ensure that you get the protection that you need. And of course, there's all those mandated registrations that they must be have, DBU licenses, DBL, CDBU, CDBLs. Uh, they need to also provide warranty, builders warranty insurance and have public liability, which are absolute critical components of, the, of building and taken on any building project in the state of Victoria. And of course, they've got to meet all their regulatory uh, obligations and requirements. Uh, water neutral pool program, so a little bit away from the sort of the heavy regulatory stuff. So what we've done here is that about 13, 14 years ago in the last drought, we developed this particular program to help conserve water. For some of you that have perhaps longer memories, there was a big drought on, not like at the moment where it's raining, raining, raining. Uh, and during that drought time, uh, our organisation sort of uh, was in a critical phase where we needed to go and spend a copious amount of money to ensure that there was uh, water being able to be pumped into new pools. So we took it also upon ourselves to develop this program. And it's reasonably simple, but there's four steps to it. Water tanks, covers, backwash minimisation systems, variable speed pumps, and other energy efficient equipment. And your pool builder can provide all that, but it's a great way to save water. So if you ever are considering a sustainable and an environmentally pool, having this program in your um, within your home is probably one of the uh, best things you can do, and it will save you money over the long term. And that's easily available through our website. 
and any of our pool builders will also offer you that program if you ever uh, so require. And I, in fact, I'd say just any home these days would have solar panels, batteries, water tanks, etc. So this is just going that extra step to make sure that uh, you have a uh, the complete sustainable home and package. Um, <clears throat> just a little bit of fun. So that's a. That was the Australian Pool of the Year this year, uh, in 2022, out in Bo Morris. Uh, a nice job there by Personal Pools. Um, only cost $650,000, but don't be afraid, not every pool costs $650,000. Um, but it was a magnificent uh, pool in a magnificent home. Um, some of the regulations to consider, which is, um, I know it can get boring, but however, they're very critical when it comes to uh, projects where you're spending this amount of money. Um, you know, it's really important that uh, all builders who conduct construction are registered with the Victorian Building Authority. If they're not, run away. Run away from them. Just don't even, you know, don't even pick up the, don't even talk to them. It, it's absolutely critical. And they must use a domestic building contract. Um, any work that's over $16,000 requires builder's warranty insurance. And if they tell you otherwise, run away. These are critical things. And there's obviously more information on the Victorian VBA website, uh, which will help you through those regulations. And you'll see some of them in our consumer guide from our website. Uh, building permits, they're mandatory. Anybody that tells you a building permit's not needed for a project like this, run away. They are mandatory. Um, you'd be surprised, even if you were to, you want to put out a pergola or a deck, you need a building permit. Um, you know, it's uh, so many people for even little projects around the house like that don't get building permits and then they find their neighbours complaining because if, I don't know, they've taken sort of, the sun sort of shining into their backyard, council comes in, they can then force you to knock that down. In, so it's in, in critical the building permit um, is taken out. Now, reason being, the re uh, building practitioners, uh, they must carry all those insurances as we've mentioned. Adequate documentation is prepared to enable compliant construction um, and an independent review of the building documentation occurs at this stage. So it's an, an incredibly important step. One of the key stages, one of the key stages when it comes to uh, in this area is that the consumer must appoint the relevant building surveyor. You can't appoint, the builder can't do that. They have to be an independent body and that's where the relevant building surveyor comes in and they uh, make up a huge part of this process. And then, of course, at the end of it all, your pool and spar and barrier is independently assessed for its uh, regulatory compliance and its suitability for use. Without that, you can't put a drop of water in the pool unless it's a fiberglass pool with a temporary fence around it. Correct? Um, right, other benefits for owners include compliance with building legislation for building work commencing and the council goes through all that process. So the building permit triggers all these regulatory compliance steps and processes which are absolutely critical. Right, safety barriers, just briefly on safety barriers. In case you haven't heard, you would have heard over the last two years, our organisation was uh, instrumental in shaping and influencing uh, safety barrier legislation in this state with our um, collaborative partners in Kids Save Victoria, Life Saving Victoria, Municipal Association Victoria and other bodies. Um, but if you've got an in-ground and above-ground pool, holds 30 centimetres of water, must have a barrier. Compliant safety barrier with the building permit. Doesn't have that, run away. Whoever tells you otherwise, run. So that is critical. So above ground pools, portable spas, inflatable pools and spas. With mechanical componentry. Often I get asked, Chris, I mean, I live on 10 acres, I've got a dam up the road. How come that doesn't require a barrier? It's not considered a place where kids 
see fun and games, etc. So it just takes on a whole different um, aspect and perspective when it comes to the government, and they don't consider that a uh, an area where children gravitate towards like they do to a pool. If you're planning to get a pool, uh, Victoria construction, installation, spas, safety barriers are subject to strict requirements under the regulations. Uh, you've got to ensure that there's self-latching, self-closing pool gates that are compliant. They must comply with Australian standards 2012. We are currently working on the new draft standard of 2019. That should come out for public review within the next six months. Uh, property owners, occupants are responsible for making sure that their pool barriers are maintained, repaired and kept in good work in order. You will get a pool barrier inspector will come out every four years and they'll inspect to make sure that your barrier is compliant. What we've found in the past, um, that there's a lot of, a lot of the kids that uh, do drown, unfortunately, there has been many accidents, it usually happens through a gate. And it's imperative that that gate is in good work in order and it's checked annually to ensure that it, there's no wear and tear to it. And in all the cases, supervision was critical and key and lacking. So again, um, this is an important step of being a responsible pool and spa owner and we encourage everyone to ensure that uh, all their barriers are compliant. These are some of the areas where you don't require barriers. I mentioned earlier a dam, um, fountains for example, um, fish ponds, etc. You can see them up there on the, on the slide. Um, inflatable swimming pools that, um, that the toddler wades in for example, that's not, um, that doesn't require a barrier. But if it's got mechanical componentry, and some of the bigger ones, inflatable ones, you could probably buy from Clark Rubber, may have, then that requires a, um, a barrier to, to be around it. Okay, barrier inspections, they're critical. So, if something happens, the coroner's gonna start asking questions. So, evidence of inspection, compliance requirements, photos, videos, checklists. So again, it feeds back into that loop of having compliant regulatory barriers around your safety of all. And these are the dates for those of you that have existing pools or are looking to put a pool or a spa in uh, of when you will need to lodge your certificate of compliance with your local council. And if you want any more information on this, if you just jump on either our website or the VBA website, there's a whole list of these dates, etc., and you'll be able to uh, gain more information as needed. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about owner builders. Um, I know there's people out there think they can dig their own hole and, um, I don't know, throw some concrete down there and pour water in it and then they've got a pool well. We get a lot of consumer people that will ring up and invariably when things go wrong, uh, it's an owner builder that has done something naughty. Um, and it's like absolutely critical that I get this point across, that building a pool or a spa for that matter, um, there's a lot involved. It's not something that you know, any person can do themselves. You really need to have some knowledge these things like hydraulics, you know, when you see the spaghetti of pipes that goes into these projects, knowing which way the water needs to flow in and out, is, again, is a critical function. Uh, still fixing, etc. Uh, we recommend that people use registered builders. Don't go and try and do these things on your own. There's things like oh and s issues, warranty insurance, etc. won't come into it if you try and do these things yourself. Um, and of course, complying with all the Australian standards. The average consumer does not understand all the Australian standards. They are thick pieces of document. And uh, so, you know, we urge uh, and implore people to go get a professional, get the job done right properly. Um, you know, if you think you're gonna save a dollar or two, it's a false economy. Invariably something goes wrong. <coughs> um, and that's what I've just said. So use those industry professionals. 
Um, okay, look, any other uh, capital investment? What do you do? To, you know, over the last two days, people have been asking me about where do I start? I say, well, do your research. Find how long these people have been in business, whether they're a pool builder or a house builder, you know. Um, look at their examples. What work have they done? What awards have they done? I think the previous speaker before me was talking about awards, awards they won, not because they can beat their chest, but it just means that they're doing something right. They've been recognised for excellence over many, many years. In a lot of cases, in our particular scenario here, it's been decades. We have generational builders. Um, someone like Compass Pools has been around 40 years, maybe more, 50, 50 years. They're on to their second, I think the grandkids are starting to come through, aren't they? Yeah, so that means something. That means that they're doing something right. You know, what is and isn't included in the, pl in the price? So uh, what's the building process? What are the steps involved? They will, with care and empathy and understanding, take you through those steps. You know, what permits, approvals are needed? You must ensure that their members, I know it's, uh, I keep harping on that point, but there's a reason why we've been around for 61 years and there's a reason why the best of the best in the industry are members of us and why they carry that moniker. And um, so always do your research and ask as many questions as you possibly can. Uh, just for those out there, um, which we hope there's not many, and I believe my, my current deliberations uh, is how there's not that many disputes come through this organisation, but there is a uh, regulatory body uh, that's been established in 2017 to help consumers and builders come together and mediate. It's called the Domestic Building Dispute Resolution Victoria. Everything in government is an acronym, and this is uh, another one of those things. But uh, um, it's important to know that there are bodies out there to help you if something does go wrong in the building process. Pools and spas are fun, um, so make sure you uh, buy a pool and spa in your backyard. In fact, uh, when we were young, it was the kitchen, the three concrete steps, the hill hoist in the middle, and maybe a cricket pitcher or veggie patch. That was it. Today, kitchen, al fresco, barbecue, dining onto a beautiful landscape garden with a pool or a spa. So there's, there's a, uh, things have changed over the last 30, 40 years. I just want to touch briefly on the role of the building surveyor. They are, again, like I said earlier, a critical component of the building process. They provide independence, oversight, with safety standards for the built environment. Um, and they can only be appointed by the consumer, by the customer. And the, the reason for that being is so that they can have that level of independence. Um, they review, analyse, assess plans, um, they look at soil test reports, the whole thing. And those surveys are used for your home construction and they're also used for pool construction. Thank you for the five. I thought I had 15 minutes left. I'm just getting started. <laughs> Um, they also conduct the relevant inspections through the stages of that pool dig to ensure that everything is in place, especially at excavation stage, um, at still fixing stage, and of course at the end when they're uh, looking at that pool barrier. And by the way, it can only ever be oh, one building survey per project. Instead of talking over the top of them? Okay, right. Um, so once that permit's been uh, obtained, construction may commence. Um, the no RBS is notified for the following inspections, excavation, temporary fencing if, if needed, pre-plumbing, etc. Temporary fencing, just the brief one. Um, will not be approved as a permanent safety barrier. Uh, so if you're thinking you can have the pool and have a temporary fence for five years until you find the money to uh, do your landscaping, no, it doesn't work like that. You want to get signed off, you must have a, a proper temporary barrier installed. They're just some examples. Um, 
of temporary barriers, and that's a proper one. Uh, and that's probably be one of your compass pools, no? Maybe not. But it's a, it's a good safe barrier. Uh, any questions from the floor? Megan, would you like? Did you have a question earlier? No. Well, I'd like to thank you. That's all, and we're uh, at stand C29. Um, again, you're more than welcome to come and talk to us, and uh, we're happy to give advice and um, on regulations or anything else that uh, you require for your uh, wonderful backyard experience with a pool or a spa. Thank you. Thank you.